Hey everyone, it's Susan Pierce Thompson and welcome to the weekly vlog. So I wanted to bring up this topic that was raised in the Brightline Eating online support community a month or two back. Someone posted essentially this. They said, you know, Susan Pierce Thompson always talks about how when you do bright line eating and you write down your food the night before, it reduces the number of decisions that you have to make about your food down to almost none. That there's this research that shows that the average person is making over 200 food related decisions every day. But if you do bright line eating, because you've written down your food and then the next day you're just gonna eat that, um, only in exactly that, you really have no decisions to make except to maybe like, am I gonna eat lunch now or later or something like that? And I have said that, I, I definitely have been known to say that. And she said, that's not my experience because if I'm gonna eat only in exactly what I wrote down the night before, I'm still faced with all of these other alternatives that I have to say no to throughout the day. And I have to make a decision. No, I'm not eating that stuff in the break room. No, I'm not getting a snack at the snack bar at the movie theater. No, I'm not having a glass of wine at dinner. No, I'm not. And those are decisions that I'm faced with and I'm exhausted by the end of the day. Like the decision fatigue, the willpower depletion is very, very real as I go through my life saying no, resisting temptation. And I read her post and I thought, what a fascinating topic. If memory serves, I didn't reply in the comments section, so she might be surprised that I'm now bringing it up as a vlog topic. Uh, I read it, I saw it, and it's a fascinating topic. And I want to say that it raises a debate that has been going on in addiction recovery circles for decades. And it's the debate about whether or not using, like picking up your substance of choice, whether it's sugar and flour in the form of, you know, something at a wedding or whatever, or, or whether it's alcohol or a cigarette or some heroin, right? Whether using ever becomes not an option. Like, the brain doesn't even suggest it as an option and therefore it doesn't deplete your willpower because you're not saying no thank you in your brain over and over and over again. Your brain isn't even proposing it as an option, right? Therefore, no decision required. And I want to share a little bit about the science of how the brain works. I'm not going to go too deep, deep, deep into it. it it's pretty simple here. Basically, we move through our world making decisions all the time. I mean, if you think about it, every micro moment is a choice point. Am I going to keep walking or stop or, you know, start whistling row, row, row your boat? Or, I, can, I mean, can you see it? If you really entertain all possible options at any given moment of the things you could conceivably do in this environment, with what's available to you, the options are infinite at any given moment, right? And so before you're deciding, there's the part of your brain that's um, advancing the alternatives, like saying, here's your landscape of choices. Now, what do you wanna do? Do you wanna keep walking? Do you wanna stop suddenly? It probably doesn't suggest, do you wanna stop suddenly and start whistling, row, row, row your boat, <laughs> um, or any other of the hundreds of songs that it could propose, right? Why not? Well, um, because the part of your brain that advances the options has some calculus that it does based on past experience of what the reasonable alternatives in that situation would be based on, and this is where it sort of gets more complicated, how your brain sort of decides based on what your motives are, what your end state goals are, uh, how you've behaved in similar environments in the past and so forth. And it presents an array of options um, that's congruent with all of that stuff, right? And so the question is, does your brain ever stop advancing the option that you eat that stuff. Does it ever give you peace? 
And in my experience, it does, or it can, but not if you don't train it right. So this is the crux of why in that free report that I put out in 2014, the three huge mistakes that almost everyone makes when they try to lose weight, one of those three huge mistakes was making exceptions. Because as soon as you have a bright line eating program that says, well, sometimes I'll change it here or there's wiggle room here or whatever, you're keeping the full array of options available in your brain to be advanced every time. And then if you want to stay on the straight and narrow for a bit, you have to say no every time. Nope, I'm not doing that. Nope, that's NMF. Nope, I don't, I'm not going to eat, you know, stuff at the movie theater. But if you do sometimes, or you even sort of keep the identity alive that you might or that you're going to you know, consider the options, then your brain's going to keep presenting those options. Certainly with the kind of history that most of us have with eating a certain way in this kind of environment, it takes a fair bit of rigor to starve out that possibility so that the brain reaches a point where it doesn't even think it's an option. Um, I have reached that point in various times in my bright line eating journey, I'm there now. My brain is not suggesting alternatives to me. I walk through an airport, I look at a restaurant menu, and nothing appears as a as a as an option except my bright line option. And if there's more than one, those couple ones appear. Where's the salad? Where's the, you know, where's the where's the food that I eat, right? I'm not even seeing the pasta section, the dessert section, the, I don't even see it on the menu. It's not even there for me. My brain isn't advancing it as an option. But not that long ago, when I was breaking my bright lines fairly regularly, it was advancing it as an option. And I'm lucky in that I had years and years and years of squeaky clean bright lines under my belt. And so I guess my brain has a mode that it can go into now where it kind of knows, oh, she's serious. <laughs> <laughs> and it stops advancing those options. And I think this is an interesting point because this is where I believe, there's no research on this, folks. We're, we're in uncharted territory here in terms of how this uh, aspect of brain function works um, for a weight loss journey or a bright line eating journey or whatever. This is, this is new territory. Um, but I've experienced just through living the bright line eating way that you, um, let me put it this way, that the brain knows how serious you are. That the part of you that surrenders or that uh, decides, deep, deep, deep down decides, commits, I'm not eating that stuff anymore. And I'll do whatever it takes. I will go to any lengths one day at a time to not eat that stuff anymore. I don't eat like that anymore. I just, I just follow the effing plan. When you decide that, I believe that you hasten the day, you make it come sooner where your brain stops advancing those options. It stops suggesting that you might want to consider whether you want to you know, eat that stuff in the break room. You might want to consider whether you want to go stand in line at the movie theater snack bar. Um, it's also my experience that there are individual differences, rather extreme individual differences in the trajectory, the time course along which a brain will stop suggesting all of those other things to eat as options and making you say no, 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 over and over and over again and resisting temptation. Some people experience a brain that doesn't suggest those things almost from the beginning of their bright line eating journey, where um, once in a while the brain might entertain a vague notion of like, maybe you want to eat that thing, but it's pretty easily shut down and it's rare. 
And mostly the brain is now suggesting Brightline Foods and Brightline, you know, the Brightline friendly path, the path of just follow the plan, right? And other people experience a much more harrowing, um, depleting, and extended time course or trajectory of working toward having a brain that doesn't suggest those things as options anymore. And yes, during that time, it is depleting and you have to say no, 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 I don't eat that stuff. And that's why in my materials, in the book, in the boot camp, and so forth, I talk about putting your bunny slippers on at the beginning. It is incredibly depleting, and yes, it takes willpower at the beginning to set up a bright line brain. Um, but I think this point is really important because um, I don't suggest that you never make exceptions because I'm a fan of black and white thinking, or I'm a fanatic, or any, any of the sort. I'm actually none of that. I actually really just have experienced and believe that the path to getting happy, thin, and free is, unfortunately, I'm sorry, it's true, nurturing a brain that doesn't expect you to make exceptions so that it stops advancing that stuff as an option. It stops hounding you. The way I like to talk about it is hounding you for a treat all the time, right? If you give your brain a treat, <laughs> it will keep hounding you for a treat. So um, I think it's a really important philosophical question. Does the brain of an addict ever reach a point where when, especially when stress and emotions are flying high, like off the charts high, the table of options comes up of like, what are we going to do now? And using your preferred substance isn't even on the table. You're thinking, I might call a friend. I need to write down my food. Maybe I should just go to bed. Should I post in the online community about it? Like, those are the options that come up. Do I need to take a walk? Does the dog need to get fed? What's the next right thing? I don't know if I can stand this day or this moment for one more second. That's the table of options as opposed to, am I going to eat? Am I going to eat this? Am I going to eat that? I am in the camp where I believe that because I've experienced it and I've watched it happen in so many people, it is so possible to develop a brain where eating is not an option anymore. It's not advanced by that part of the brain that presents the viable alternatives in any given moment. Almost ever, like just not advanced. This is the reason for the hashtag NSV in our online community, non-scale victory, NSV. Hashtag non-scale victory. I went through this and this and this and this, and my brain didn't even suggest that I eat over it. You've seen that, right? If, you, if you've been in the Bright Line Eating online support community, you've seen that. People talk about that. Look at that. What a win. I didn't even think about eating. <sighs> awesome. Developing a brain where eating off plan is not an option. And until you have one, absolutely, you're left with needing to make the decision afresh each time. No, thank you. No, thank you. No, thank you. And... I guess the point of this vlog is to look, if you still have a brain that's advancing that option to you, is there anything you could do differently in your bright line eating journey? Is there anything you want to do differently in your bright line eating journey to earn a different kind of brain, to train your brain otherwise? I know that's easier said than done. I know it takes a deep, deep shift and I know it means giving up a lot. It's not trivial. And if you're high enough on the susceptibility scale, in my experience, it's really worth it. Because the other path is so rough. It's depleting. It just is. So that's the weekly vlog. I'll see you next week.